In this video, we're going to talk about when limits fail to exist. Before we look at the first situation where a limit fails to exist, we need to talk a little bit about the notation. So if we're looking at a one-sided limit, that means we're trying to find the limit as it approaches C from either side. So if I'm approaching from the left side, we would just wrote, write um, X approaches C and then an exponent of negative or a superscript and then just for the right side it would be a plus sign so from the negative side or left side you would use a negative from the positive side or right side you would use a positive so the first way that we're going to look at when a limit fails to exist is when the two limits are not the same and we would just say that the limit does not exist and we just write d and e so our first example is y equals the absolute value of x divided by x. So as we can see, when x is negative, I'm going to end up with a positive value over the negative value. But when x is positive, it's a positive over a positive. So I'm either going to get negative 1 or I'm going to get positive 1. So as x approaches 0, as we can see from the left side, the left-hand limit here is negative 1, and the right-hand limit is positive 1. So that's the first way where a limit would fail to exist. The next way that a limit could fail to exist is if we have unbounded behavior. And what I mean by that is that our function is going to increase to infinity or decrease to negative infinity as x approaches c. So if we look at the graph of y equals one divided by x squared, we can see that as x approaches zero, the y value is increasing without bound. So we would say that the limit does not exist um, Later on, we might say that the limit is infinity, just because that gives us a little bit better of idea of what the function itself will look like. But for now, we're just going to stick with that the limit does not exist. The last way a limit could fail to exist is in an oscillating function. And so when we talk about something that oscillates, it's going to bounce back and forth between two values and typically get closer and closer. So this is the graph of sine of 1 over x. And we can see, even if I were to zoom in, it's very hard to tell what the value of the function is because the sine function is going to go back and forth of 1 over x is going to go back, back and forth between those two values. So we can see that the positive and negative um, 1 is what our function will bounce back and forth between. So when we get here to the middle, to when x approaches 0, again, we can't say that it approaches either 1 or negative 1 because it's bouncing so quickly in between those two values. I want to do a little bit of practice with one-sided limits or where limits maybe would fail to exist. So let's start with the value of negative two. So if you'll notice, I'm basically asking you three questions. So we're starting with negative two. So that's where x is negative two. What's happening with y? So the first question asks for, I'm just gonna draw a dotted line here so we know that's where we're working. So the first question asks, the limit as x approaches negative two from the left. So from the left, the y value is approaching negative 1. From the right, the y value is approaching negative 1. Because those two are the same, and obviously it's not infinity, it's an actual value, then the limit does exist, and that limit is negative 1. Now, the last one says, What's the value of the function at that point? Because I find a lot of people get confused with that. So the value of the function, f of negative two, is where I would put the point, the closed circle. So f of negative two would in fact be negative one. So for my first question, all of the solutions are negative one. So now let's look at zero. So at zero, 
I can see from the left side, so again, I'm looking at all of the places where x is zero, which is down this line. Now, as x approaches zero from the left, I would say that this is the limit does not exist. Why doesn't it exist? Because we can see this function stops at what appears to be negative one half. So nothing is approaching um, zero from the left hand side. But from the right hand side, if I follow my function, I can see that it's increasing without bound. So I would say either that it's infinity or that it does not exist. Because I have does not exist, obviously the limit itself does not exist. So this gave us a does not exist because there's no function that's approaching zero. This gave us does not exist because it's approaching infinity. So obviously the limit does not exist. The last question says, what's the value of the function at zero? And that would be that there is no value of the function, but I can't write does not exist. I would have to write undefined. Oops. Undefined would be that there is no value at zero because there's no closed circle. The last one is at positive two. So again, I'm looking along this line. So at positive two, if I approach positive two from the left, we can see that it approaches what appears to be one half. So the limit from the left does exist and it's one half. The limit from the right, as you can see, there's no function over here. So there is no limit because there is no function approaching two from the right. What about the limit as x approaches two? Well, again, because these two don't match up, this is does not exist. So the two have to match up and they have to both not be infinity. But is the function f of two defined? It is right down here. We can see that two comma negative three is a closed circle. So this value is negative three. Up next, we're going to take a look at the epsilon delta limit definition.